The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Monday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. Hope everyone had a great 4th of July weekend out there. Nice to get three days off and the market picking up with some strength right where it left off last weekend. I got a 15-minute chart up there. You back it up to last week. Talk about a straight shot upward from 29.83. We opened previous Sunday night in the futures. We're currently trading in the S&Ps up about 40 points, trading at 31.68. NASDAQ futures up 128 points, trading 10,483. Dow futures up almost 400 points, trading 26,145. We've got oil basically flat at 40.62. We got gold off about $2 right now. Gold. Uh, excuse me, gold up now three dollars at seventeen ninety three. Silver up twenty eight cents. Let's jump over to gold and silver real quick. Here's your gold chart now up five dollars in the future, and you can see why I thought it was down a little bit. I haven't been paying attention over the last uh, hour or so. Gold creeping higher from the lows that we made at about six a.m. We're trading from seventeen eighty two now climbing higher towards eighteen hundred at seventeen ninety five. Silver with a bid as well six. Excuse me, 1863 in silver, the high of last week, 1885 as we climb back up towards that level. Oil contract basically flat at 4067, made a high of 41 over 8, excuse me, 4108 overnight. And notes and bonds, some pretty muted action with what's going on in the market right now. We get the 10 year off about six ticks at 138.29. You can see though, not even back to where we were on Thursday. Excuse me, in the 30 year, down 20 ticks at one. 77.21 and we'll start things off let's jump over to the vix this morning as you may expect this market plowing higher 27.55 that 25.73 print there not sure if that's a real print on friday made it excuse me thursday final trading day of last week made it down to i believe 25 handle 25.90 right at about 9 a.m in the market this vix pairing some of those gains pulling back with a market that just continues to want higher price Jumping back to what else we have going on in the market, jumping around to some of the stocks with action this morning. And we'll jump right into uh, Uber. Always taking a look at Uber. Their deal to buy Grubhub falling apart within the last month, and they go right back at it. They get it done with Postmates. Re reportedly agree on a $2.65 billion all-stock deal. That deal, and we got Uber trading higher on the deal. The ride-sharing company Uber agreed to buy a excuse me, agreed on a deal to buy food delivery app Postmates. I personally never use Postmates. Uh, the deal approved by Uber's board could be announced as soon as today, uh, adding that the head of Uber's food delivery business, Uber Eats, is expected to continue to run the combined delivery business. Uh, Postmates last valued at $2.5 billion when it raised money in September. So they're coming in at 2.65, making sure that the people who came in in the last round, they get a profit too. Founded in 2011, and they accounted for 8% of the U.S. meal delivery market in May. So quite a slice, 8% adding to Ubers. And you're going to see the pop in Uber, charging higher from 3068. We're going to open almost $3 higher. That's almost 10% on Uber this morning from 3068 to 3346 right now on Uber. A little bit of a different story in terms of Lyft, but I like to take a look at both of them. Lyft, really not in the food delivery business, but nonetheless from 3182 up with the market to 3275 this morning. Other stories out there we have going on. So, yeah, we'll jump to the, the bond story. So it was interesting in terms of, we took a look at the yields, right? Yields higher as investors await economic data. But what I want to get into is that they really aren't moving as much as you might expect. So let's take a look at the market real quick, because keep your eye on yields as this market continues to go higher, yet yields just not, I mean, notes and bonds not really pulling back. I mean, this is your market, right? A straight shot upward. Normally, you'd you'd see bonds, the price of bonds pulling back, yields going up if the market is accelerating to that degree. Now that's going back all towards last week, right? We include Friday, you make a low in the market Sunday night in the futures. Now we jump to the 10 year, 
Talk about a different story, right? It's almost no correlation whatsoever. We're just in a range, and we've been in a range. And you put this. Talk about a flat line, folks. We are just hanging here. At 138.31, you did have that dip at the beginning of June. That correlated to a 10-year yield of about 0.9%. And for reference right now, you have the 10-year yield putting it sitting just under 7 tenths percent at 0.692% for the yield on that 10-year. In terms of what else happening, Mr. Warren Buffett over the weekend putting some of his capital to work. Come on, cooperate. Load for me. There we go. Uh, Berkshire buying Dominion Energy natural gas assets, assets in a $10 billion deal. So they're going to spend $4 billion to buy the natural gas transmission and storage asset, assets, including the assumption of debt. It's about $10 billion. It's the first major purchase since the whole collapse in March for the coronavirus. So Berkshire Hathaway Energy will carry 18% of all interstate natural gas transmission in the United States, up from 8%. Quite a boost. Uh, you look at how much cash... Warren Buffett has on hand at his annual shareholder meeting just in May, $137 billion. I mean, it's remarkable to think about at that type of cash, just getting a 2% yield, and you're not getting a 2% yield, right? The 10-year yield sitting at about 0.7%, but if you're able to somehow get your money into a money market, even if you want to say get 1%, if you get 1%, you have an extra $1.37 billion next year that you need to spend. Uh, than you had the previous year. So they're spending $4 billion, some of that cash, natural gas, a market that's been hit especially hard. Jump over to natural gas real quick. We did get that boost recently from the low of 144, but as you can see, we're just kind of sitting in this range from 160, maybe the upper end of that's about $2. You're trading up this morning. We'll zoom it in on a little shorter time frame. There's your acceleration over the weekend, right? From 175, even up to 186. There was real action last week on Monday trading all the way from under 160. We made it to above 175, and this morning we're trading about 182. Jump to oil real quick as we're taking a look at some of the commodities. Oil 4072, putting this on some context for a risk reward basis. Quite a V formation. We are now back in the gap from where the pain really began when the Saudis were talking about uh, really hitting the market, dropped their cost dramatically over the weekend from March 6th to March 9th. The oil market falls apart, and we're now within that gap, the low end of that gap, 4105. And we just hit, folks, 4108, right? We actually made that whole gap back. If you said when this market was falling apart in late April that we're going to close that gap by July 6th, I don't think most people would believe you that that one was coming but nonetheless there it is all right what else do we have going on before we get into all the stocks and the equities last day of the tiger dollar sale check it out we're about to go into a break three minute commercial i'll be right back you can use those three minutes to go over there take advantage of the tiger dollar sale running through today only you can get up to a 20 30 or 40 percent bonus way it works is tiger dollars are good for any newsletter any service Three different levels you can purchase from. For current subscribers out there, whether you're a member of the Tiger's Den, The Gold Report, Fibonacci 24-7, Mastering Probability, Basil Chapman, The Opening Call, uh, any of those services, newsletters, trading workshops, right? Any of those one-day workshops we've done. I think Steve Rhodes, he's putting one together. It's gonna be coming up. Get some Tiger dollars, get them in your account. We only do this sale a couple times a year, and this runs through today. You check that out on the front page of TFNN.com. Lots of stories this Monday, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back in three minutes to go over it all. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before this sale ends Monday, July 6th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at S&Ps positive by about 40 points right where we started the show. You're looking at a Dow positive by 395. I'm trying to pull up Tesla. Talk about a rocket ship. It's continuing, folks. My charts, come on, keep up. How about this? We close out last week at 1208. We'll just add about $75 to the price tag of a Tesla share. 1281 this morning on Tesla. Tesla gets an upgrade with a price, I believe it was 1500 Let's see if we can find what were we looking at. It was stocks with the moves. And we got Tesla at the bottom of this list. There you go. JMP Security is raising its price target $1,500 for Tesla from $1,050, saying the automaker's position to generate $100 billion in annual revenue by 2025, five years down the road. But it looks like they're pricing in some real acceleration, and that might be the right play. Uh, another stock getting a bid this morning. How about Harley Davidson? Rated a buy in new coverage at City, which notes an attractive valuation for the potential for a significant turnaround of the company's new CEO, Harley. Been hit especially hard recently. Uh, trends were not really on their side. But Hog today from 23.44 on Friday. Looks like we're going to open somewhere just under $25 with $24.50 by $24.98. The bid ask right now on Harley. Spotify got a downgrade to underperform from Market Perform, which said that although podcasts could increase the streaming service market share, it will not add much to the bottom line. Interesting stuff, the podcast uh, sector. Joe Rogan, the Rogan Experience, Spotify scooping them up to the tune of potentially $100 million a year. Incentives in there. Uh, you see how that plays out? I, I don't know. Uh, Spotify, though, 269 down a bit, you see, with the market charging higher. Spotify down a bit on that news. What else we got? Boeing, they got another test flight going on for the 737 MAX that could take place as soon as this week. According to the journal, an operational readiness review will be conducted involving government pilots. Whoops, what just happened there? I tabbed to the top. How'd that happen? Government pilots, there we go and airline crews from around the world. Boeing shares, particularly volatile last week. They started the certification process. The market accelerates higher on Monday to 195. We close it out, we don't see that price tag again. And you're gonna open a bit higher this morning, up about three bucks with the market, of course. One of the interesting things, we'll jump around, airlines. 
uh, opening all higher today from 1230 up a bit. We were almost, yeah, we were above 13 on American from 1250. Delta Airlines from 2772 to 2835. Let's look domestic. JetBlue up a bit to 1095 from almost 1060. We'll finish it off with Southwest up a bit as well. Now, interesting, uh, in light of, we pulled this chart, these charts up before. So CNBC, they keep pulling these charts. This is what's an update. They're just talking about five different charts about the economy as it tries to get back on track on COVID. Change in request for directions using Apple Maps. So only Apple Maps. You see the driving, you see the walking, almost back if not more so, right? Then pre-COVID levels, transit, nothing like it. 50%, a lot less people going in transit. I mean, you have to imagine, right? Transit was the areas that were taking place in the biggest of cities. Those have the potential to allow people to work from home at an even greater level, right? In terms of New York City, Boston, uh, some of the huge financial hubs, Seattle, San Francisco. So transit, nowhere near it. Restaurant bookings, we, we saw it get back to almost 40%. That was probably at the peak of the opening, openings, but pay attention to that drop-off, folks. We're back down now. Um, being in Florida, one of the biggest Petri dishes of them all right now, unfortunately, where we're approaching 10,000, 11,000. I think we hit 11,500 cases on Saturday. Regardless of the age, the median age, I think it's around 36 right now in Florida, so definitely lower. But when you're starting to approach 11, 12, 13,000 cases a day, uh, this thing is exponential and it's only a matter of time until it hits those people in high risk. We're seeing real tough things coming out of Houston right now that they might be out of ICU beds in about two weeks. So I don't know how this plays out. Hotel occupancy rates climbing back at a decent level. And I wanted to get to this chart. We jumped from the airlines. I mean, you, you can't look at this and have any, I don't know how you have faith in these airlines coming back folks uh air travel basically decimated and guess what basically still decimated uh down about 80 percent i read a story over the weekend you had a senator who was flying on one airline can't recall exactly which one uh, and he was shocked that guess what middle seas packed everywhere they're going to try and he was mentioning he was going to try and put some legislation out there that they can't fill middle seats i don't know how you have planes flying if you got to fly them at two-thirds capacity and airlines can't make money at two-thirds capacity so they're supposed to be required to fly planes at two-thirds capacity which means every flight that takes off they might be losing money in i don't know how that plays out and neither do investors which is why those airlines have been hit so hard we'll finish this up with home purchases talk about a resurgence in a quick way home purchases we got rates sitting at almost record lows right now home purchases holding steady in that market all right what else i'm looking at so Continuing the stocks, Regeneron with some serious volatility this morning to the upside. Regeneron said its antibody, antibody drug cocktail to treat COVID-19 is starting phase three trials less than a month after the treatment began phase one. Separately, Regeneron and partner Sanofi said a U.S. trial involving the use of their arthritis drug, Kevzara, to treat COVID-19 patients failed to help those patients recover. The trial has now been halted. Nonetheless, the, the market liked that phase three news the most. Check out that <laughs> acceleration on Regenera from 620 down to 599, up to 654. Looks like we're gonna open right in about this 645 range. You wanna see some volatility on this stock. How about that acceleration? From a low on January 30th of 331, we get that COVID volatility in March. We were flirting with lows of about 427. And since then we're up about 200, $220 now to 645 and hopefully for the country, we get some action on those uh, antibodies to help with those treatments of COVID-19. Jumping around to some of the tech stocks, it has been quite a run. Now, this is going to be a daily. My goodness, right? Look at Apple. Pre-COVID levels, 325. This morning, we're going to open at about 370, the all-time high of 372. We were down to 220. Microsoft shares, similar action. 190 was the pre-COVID high, down to about 130. This morning, Apple, uh, excuse me, Microsoft actually going to open, open at all-time highs above 209 for Microsoft, previous all-time high 20802 on Friday. You can't hold this NASDAQ down. When are we going to hit 11,000 in the NQs? It's just a nonstop rocket ship to the upside. Talk about rocket ships. Mr. Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world, making new records for what that richest man entails on a daily basis almost. Friday, we hit 2955. We closed it out at 2890. 
This morning, we're going to open more than $40 in the positive on Amazon. Check it out. It just don't stop. $29.31 from below $2,900. And uh, did we have... I thought Amazon maybe. No, it was Tesla. I was like, did Amazon get an upgrade? It's almost some of these stocks, you just can't keep up with some of the upgrades that they have to give on the prices because they're rising so quick. Uh, one of the other companies with action, medical products maker Becton Dixon, said the FDA granted emergency use authorization for a COVID-19 test that can deliver results in 15 minutes. We need better testing. We need more testing. Uh, but guess what else we need, folks? We need social distancing. And if you can't social distance, wear a mask, please. Being in Florida, um, it's it's a surreal experience. Uh, so this stock, BDX, up on that news, 255 from 245. Uh, you can't deny things, folks. When everything's shutting down, this thing is spreading like rapid fire. So please, wear a mask if you can. Practice some social distancing, and hopefully we can all get over this hump together. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes to finish up the program. I'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006. And like many of you, was drawn in by Bam! as well as Whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we're looking at a market pretty much right where we started off the program. S&P is up about 40 points at 3,168. The Dow looking to open about 380 points. NASDAQ up 132. All the markets up about 1.3 to 1.5 percent right now. Checking out the action that we've had in the Dow recently. Talk about some volatility. We got a VIX at about 27 this morning, and you're looking at minus 2 percent, 2.7, minus 2.8, June 24th. 
June 26th, plus 2.3. Uh, remarkable action in this market continues as it tries to figure out, folks, in this pandemic, I mean, it's trading off earnings that nobody knows about, right? It's trading about off future potential that nobody knows about. Now, when you want to start making estimates about three, four, five years down the road, when yes, we'll have a vaccine, yes, we'll get over this. That's what I believe. Nobody knows. That's what I believe. But it's going to take probably longer than people realize, six months, a year a year and a half and pushing for those types of estimates. That's why you're seeing some serious volatility in this market. Jumping around to some of the commodities. As I mentioned, gold contract charging higher to 17.95, the high last week of 18.07. Tom's got a nice new gold report out today. Monday, great day to sign up for any of our newsletters at TFNN Gold Report. Larry's got some great reports out there for Fibonacci Nip 24-7. He puts out a great Sunday report. Larry put out a report with a video last night. He put out a report with a video this morning for Fibonacci 24-7 subscribers. You can check all that out. Right now, though, check out this. Talk about a run for gold to 1807. And you want to check out some action, folks. 1923, I'm showing as the high when you back it up on the futures. And we've had quite a cup and handle formation as we climb back up to that level right now, flirting with 1800 on that gold contract for some context on crude. Not a, not, not, a, not a lot of strength in this chart, folks. From 147 back in 2008, you have the 2013 collapse down to a price tag of about $40. And remarkable when you think that we started this calendar year with a 65 price tag in oil, we made it to negative prices, and we're sitting at 4061. And don't forget, folks, what else? The Tiger Dollar Sale on the front page of TFNN.com ends today. Get your bonus for Tiger Dollars. Never expire. Can be used for any TFNN good or service. Thanks for joining me, folks. Stay tuned. Our man Larry Pesavento coming up live next. We'll be right back, folks.